Who is your microbiology hero and why? Of any scientist, either dead, alive, known or unknown to you, who would you like to give a shout out to now? Now, it's always hard, this, isn't it? But uh, for me, it would have to be Rita Colwell, absolute fabulous scientist and such an ins inspiration uh, for, for many of us, has shaped the understanding of cholera so that now we can predict and have prevention strategies in many different locations in the world. Still at the a conference I was at a few weeks ago was giving five different talks, despite the career stage and life stage that, that she is now in. Ooh, well, here's a one. One of my microbiology heroes would be Dr. Gardner. The reason is that he was the microbiologist who cultured the microbes that were first used, the very first experiments on penicillin. Penicillin was the start of the whole pharma industry. Penicillin has changed literally how long millions of people live. But also because his son and he used to live in my village at home. Oh, so that's very a local lovely connection. local connection yeah, as fantastic. well. Yeah, fantastic. It's a real guy in the village, well known and loved locally. But he had that huge impact as the bacteriologist involved in those first experiments with mice. It's hard to choose one, but uh, the one that comes to mind is Agnes Ullman, who just recently passed. Uh, and Philippe Sansonetti wrote a wonderful uh, obituary mm. that was in, on the FEMS website. Okay. I knew Agnes from the phage meeting days, and I never knew about her escape from the Eastern Bloc oh, wow. in the 50s through a harrowing experience in which she was, um, uh, you know, es escaped in a, in a camper uh, driven by um, Jacques Monod. Okay. And that story was in a book that I read that compared Albert Camus and Jacques Monod. And then I emailed her after this and I said, Anya, is this you? And she said, yeah, and most <laughs> people don't know about this part of my life, but it was so, it was so interesting to relate this to who she had become and uh, I think you know what a harrowing and yeah, uh, it's fascinating, fascinating story. story yeah I would say that I have a lot of microbiological heroes and um, I constantly meet them at the conferences mm. so I met both of my bosses at the conferences uh, my boss uh, that I that led my uh, research in uh, PhD Okay. I met her at FEMS, and I also met... 2017 or 2015? 2011. 2011, all the way back then. Okay, yes. wow. <laughs> so, and, and the other, uh, my postdoc boss, I met, uh, I met him not in FEMS, but in Microbiology Conference of Belgium Society for Microbiology, which is also part of FEMS. Yeah. Uh, so they are both my heroes, but if I would have to go historically, I would say that would be probably Leeuwenhoek because of his inventions and, and his spirit of looking at microbes and, and even engineering uh, the methods and the tools to, to look at the microbes. But we have these kind of modern day engineers as well. If you look at the microscopy field, I would say Tamignon, who, who led uh, the session here at FEMS about microscopy. I'm much involved in, in, in structural biology. I would have to mention a lot of people that did structural biology, starting from, uh, from people that resolved uh, ribosome and uh, finishing with people that do structural biology in my field. So many heroes. Many heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a whole, there's as many microbiological heroes almost as microbes themselves, although not quite, because there are far, far more microbes out there than people. Yeah. At one level, Louis Pasteur, yeah. uh, because he was the first person that really began to think about what uh, uh, microbes do. Uh, before him, of course, Anton uh, Leeuwenhoek, who first saw bacteria in the microscope. Uh, you know, in, in, in my lifetime, there have been enormous number of people uh, that have influenced me. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of the pioneers of gene regulation, uh, Jacques, Jacob Monod, uh, Beckwith, have always been stimulating. 
And someone what I like to mention is when I was in Edinburgh as a PhD student, uh, Willie Donachie, uh, he may be not that well known, uh, uh, was a very deep and intellectual microbiologist uh, who we used to laugh at then because he didn't come to the lab very often, but he was so deep thinking. And now looking back, he had he made m the most important seminal contributions to understand when E. coli divides, how it divides, and how this is controlled. But at the time, it, we, we used to joke at him because he, he used to appear about half past 11 in the morning in the lab, and we usually gone by two. But it wasn't that he wasn't thinking or working, he was just, you know, just this was his lifestyle. On the, on the yes. subject, yes. Oh, okay. I would say Louis Pasteur, when I started reading about him in my undergraduate class, I saw his uh, very uh, fundamental, his fundamental approaches, which helped answer a lot of questions, his, his role in uh, pasteurization as a, as a method, uh, his uh, understanding of uh, fermentation, uh, being uh, a notable and re uh, reputable chemist, is very important, and I think, uh, yeah, for that reason, I like Louis Pasteur. I think Louis Pasteur is a fantastic choice. In fact, <laughs> I recently got to visit the Institut Pasteur in Paris, oh. and we got to see his tomb, oh, which right. is underneath the, insta uh, in the, underneath the institution. There is his, like, marbled tomb, and it's wow. like this kind of cross between science and religion, and it has angels, and then descriptions of his research, and it's wow. one of the craziest places. It's, and, it, and his resting is right there, wow. underneath the institution. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it will be something lovely to see. Uh, okay, let me uh, tell one name is uh, Professor Jeffrey Errington. Mm. He is now working in Newcastle. Okay. And actually he is one of the helo who is working with the bachelors for a long time. And actually he is uh, quite a well good scientist, a good person, mm. and also with a humor, and the people love him a lot. Probably the first one uh, is Michael Wagner, because okay. that is the first great microbiologist that I have dealt with uh, during my master yeah. thesis, okay. basically. So I've never worked with him directly, but I was host in his group, his great group. And then the second, but not the, the less important, is uh, Bernard Schink which is a German uh, bi microbiologist, and he's a, in particular, he's a biochemist, which gave great contribution to uh, the understanding of biochemical cycle in microorganisms. He, he retired last year, okay. or two years ago, I think, so he's not yeah. working anymore. But I think he was one of the greatest microbiologists mm. I've ever met. Uh, I th there were a number of influences. Um, my first Powerful one was my postdoc mentor, Bruce Ames. And I was a grad student in Illinois. I heard him give a seminar, and I was at that point getting conversant with nucleic acid chemistry and a bit with nucleic acid biochemistry. But I could see, I, I thought when I heard him talk, I said, he knows how to think like a cell. And I was drawn to him, not only because of the science he'd done, but I wanted to sort of learn to, if I could somehow grasped how to think physiologically and not just learn yeah. genetics. And then when I came to MIT, I was very powerful. There were a number of excellent microbiologists from um, Boris Magasanic, who worked on nitrogen metabolism, uh, Salvador Luria, my colleague, uh, Nobel Prize winner, founder of our cancer center, and, uh, Maury Fox, who's very, very thoughtful about DNA repair, and David Botstein, who was a huge influence on me. He was a bundle of enthusiasm about all things genetic. So I think those in particular, and then other, along the way, other, that I could keep going for probably an hour, yeah, but the people who influenced people. me, so it was never one single person, because they sort of drifted into it and yeah. from a different kind of chemical training. And then I, I still, to this day, have people that I get excited by and I learn things from. Okay. Well, I'm glad there's many, at least. Oh, there's many. <laughs> there are many. There are many, I'm sure. If I had to pick one, it's, uh, it's Edward Jenner. For, for the reasons that, first of all, he was a doctor, he was an MD, he was trained by John Hunter, you know, the, one of the, uh, the, the pioneer in modern medicine. Uh, he was uh, an entomologist, he was an ornithologist, he was a botanist. He was kind of a Renaissance man. And I, I, I think he had this capacity of observation, which allowed him to 
you know, see this issue of uh, you know vaccine and uh, and and but the, you know, the the and the entire discovery of vaccination by Jenner was, was based on his observation of these uh, you know pustules on the, on 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 the on the, the hands of these persons, and and you know I like him for this because uh, to me is is he he's, he was a doctor, he was an, a man of enormous knowledge and, and he was uh, someone observing and, and, and making decisions on the basis of his observation. So if I had one to single out, it's, it's Jenner. Now having said this, I have a passion for the last part of the 19th century and the, uh, my heroes of course are you know, Pasteur, Mechnikov, uh, you know, Fleming. Uh, the giants it's of, like uh, a group, these are giants. Yeah. Uh, again, but if I if I put some sort of emotional dimension to it, I, I go back to Jenner all the time. <laughs> my hero, oh, maybe my first microbiology professor who kind of got me hooked into the whole bacteria world, who was just like sitting there giving us lecture and talking about what microbes can do, and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. So who was that lecturer? Um, Professor Michael Hecker from okay. Greifswald, from Germany. Yeah. Yes. And what was his uh, speciality? What was the part of microbiology he looked at? Physiology. How can bacteria adapt to certain environments? Okay, so yes. a nice thread of <laughs> exactly. consistency there here through all of your <laughs> yeah. Yeah, answers. Lovely. Okay, um, I'm going to have to go with Fleming. Um, you know, he, he did uh, find penicillin. Uh, and I really love how it was found by accident. And it's kind of how all the best things are discovered. Um, so yeah, it's going to be Fleming because he revolutionized healthcare. My biological hero is Sidney Brenner for the reason that he, he, he was a free mind, uh, incredibly imaginative, participated in several key discoveries of classic biology, and last but not least, and a great sense of humor. Yeah, okay, which is always good. <laughs>